Hey, it's Jared. In this video, we're going to take a look at a WordPress plugin for analytics called Analytics WP. Now, I've been using this plugin on several of my websites and some client websites over the last month. I have been skeptical in the past of analytics plugins simply because there's always something that goes wrong with them. They either become disconnected or they cause some sort of problems. They often slow down load times and just different things like that. But I decided to give Analytics WP a try because I have been a customer of one of their other plugins, Solid Affiliate, and I'm growing tired of the analytics game of just trying to fight Google Analytics and get the data that I want out of it. Now, obviously Google Analytics is great. It does the job and there's a lot that you can manipulate and use with the data that comes out of Google Analytics. But if you want something that is not susceptible to ad blockers and different browsers, such as the Brave browser, which is a browser that I use that blocks a lot of that stuff, there's iOS 18 and all of the different things that potentially block tracking. And so your data just isn't as good. But if your data is first party, which means it exists from your own website, then you have a leg up. The blockers are not going to be able to block that data because that's first party data. What it's blocking is third party data. And since the plugin exists on our own website, we get good data. So what are some of the main features of Analytics WP? First of all, it is a comprehensive data tracking and analysis plugin, and it gives you all the information that you would want. Obviously, there are some things that it's going to be missing that Google Analytics is good at, such as you know advanced conversion tracking and stuff like that. But all the data that we want to know about our own website, such as what are the pages people are visiting, where are they going, how many pages are they visiting, and a lot more. All of that can be collected first party, and we can do that right from within our WordPress website. So just as their website says, it is ad blocker resistant first party tracking, which is what solves that problem. We could follow the user journey as well, and it also has journey merging, which means if users switch devices, it's going to collect all of that data under one journey, which typically can be a little bit challenging for other analytics platforms. There's 20% plus more data than Google Analytics, which is good because there's a lot of blockers that are out there and people are using these, or maybe even smartphones are just automatically suggesting to block this stuff. There's lots of good details and information on their website, but let's actually go and look at several websites that I'm using. Now I have several websites that I installed this on and some of these sites don't get a whole lot of traffic, but I've also installed this on sites that get a little bit more traffic. But let's just take a look at my own uh, course website. This is a website that I set up for my online courses. I have a couple of WordPress courses if you're interested. Both of them are free, so check that out in the description below. I moved some of my courses off of WordPress to Podia, so this site doesn't get the traffic that it used to, but I still have it up. And so we can see here, here's the last seven days of traffic. And then if we come down here, we can see popular refers. This is information that we don't necessarily get the best data when it comes from Google Analytics anymore. You know, they try to hide this stuff, make it a little bit more challenging and, and just give us categories. But at least we get this information here, such as the number one refer for my site, aside from people just directly typing in or going directly to my website is YouTube, which is great to know. We can also see the popular pages here, device breakdown, per country analytics are coming soon. And so there's lots of good information and details there. We haven't even gotten to journeys yet. Let's move over to my personal website. Personal website, same data information that's here. But if we go and look at journeys, journeys will tell us what people are doing to get through our website. So for example, if we look at this journey, we click on this one. Actually, I think this is my admin login. With this website, it only has a few pages, so people typically come and bounce and are gone because there just isn't a lot of information. But we can view the entire journey of a user here as well, which is pretty cool. So let's go to a site that has maybe a little bit more traffic. This is uh, my tech blog that I hardly ever post to. So let's take a look at the journeys there and see if we've got a little bit more data. And we've got a lot of anonymous data here, which is fine because it's hard to identify someone unless there's an action for them to take place place on your website. For example, if I had WooCommerce installed on this site and a purchase took place, these would no longer be anonymous actions. And so I can click on any of these journeys and I could see somebody went from Google to my website and that was the end of that journey. And so even back here, when we look at my course website, if we look under journeys, 
This one is known, this A4 is known because that's a user login, so that's an identified user. But if we look at any of these other ones, for example, this anonymous action here with four event counts, and so we'll take a look at that one. Somebody got to my website from Google, they didn't went to my contact page, they didn't went to the about page, and then it looks like after a little while they came back after visiting LinkedIn, they got back to my website. So interesting just to see the journey there. If we move over to this site, we also have YouTube as a major contributor. We've got all the different pages. For example, I can see that this blog or this article that I wrote is probably the number one traffic getter for my site. Number one is actually Google. And so I know a lot of people are Google searching and they're coming to this page. So if I click on this, then it takes me straight to that page and I can see what article that is. And if I wanna go look at journeys, I can see if people are actually going to a different location. So perhaps they land on an article and then they click around the website a little bit. So for example, here, it looks like they just visited this article three different times. And so they kept the article open for a while. So interesting to know. And so this is good data just to be able to have within WordPress. Google Analytics has kind of gotten challenging for the average person. I don't send Google Analytics data or information to my clients anymore because it's just too hard for them to really see what is going on. I have to parse that data somehow and make it easier for them to consume. And Analytics WP definitely does that. Very easy for me to see all of the information. Of course, I could change my filter. I think on this particular site, I installed it on the 18th. So this site hasn't had Analytics WP on it for a long period of time. And then I can also filter down as well. So if I wanna add a rule, so for example, I wanna see all the refers that contain Google or specific UTM sources and stuff like that. Maybe I wanna see what kind of traffic has come over a period of time from a specific email campaign or email automation that I've been running. I can specifically see this information and just get that data here. Very easy to create filters and see that information without having to create anything crazy. It's just a simple filter and we see that data. So the settings page is relatively simple. We can disable tracking for specific user roles. So you did see earlier that there was a journey entry for myself because I'm a known logged in user and it showed my journey. I can omit that so that it doesn't show my tracking. It just basically anything that I'm doing on the website, it's gonna go ahead and remove that. And so if you wanna remove that, you can. So I might remove that for administrators, but if I had a site that had other users that might be browsing the site as well, I might wanna leave those enabled, especially if you were using WooCommerce, you had an e-commerce store, you would wanna make sure that you didn't disable any roles that were customer roles. And so Analytics WP also has an option to add a how did you hear about us question on the checkout page if you have WooCommerce. So you can enable this and then it would ask that question and then it would collect that data within Analytics WP, which is a pretty neat little feature. So then taking a look at one of my customer sites that I just installed the plugin on, I can see uh, basic information on where people are coming from. A lot of people from Google, which is good to see. It looks like people are landing on the home page. They're also landing on our main products page, contact page, and then from there, they're browsing different products. And so that's great. If we go look at journeys, we could see the journey of those individual customers as well. Now, unfortunately, this site doesn't have WooCommerce installed. The e-commerce aspect is on Shopify, so people have to bounce from this site to another site. But what we can see here is somebody came to this site, they browsed a product, they looked at a different product, and then they went back to the homepage, then they went back to the products page, they looked at a few other products as well, and then they went back to the home page. And so I would assume that this person, as they looked around long enough, probably did end up bouncing somewhere where they can actually make a purchase, which is great. I would really like with this customer to have WooCommerce running all of their e-com for their products. That would be great. So we aren't sending customers elsewhere all the time, but it's good to have that data here. Now we can also see page views. So we've got unique people, which is unique individuals and page views. So page views would be how many pages total were viewed by all of the unique people. Then we have views per person, which is a great metric. How long are they staying on our site? 2.24 pages right now. And as you can see, we're getting percentages on all of these. So we can see whether we're improving or things are getting worse over time. And then we have window shopper rate, which is kind of your bounce rate. This is the percentage of people that viewed just one page and then left and never came back. So obviously you want this number to be as low as possible because a high window shopper rate would be like a high bounce rate. We want that to be nice and low. So this is a good low percentage, I would say. If we look at some of my other sites, 
people are probably bouncing much faster. So with this site, I've got a pretty high window shopper rate because there's really nothing that anybody can do on this site other than leave and go get my free photography course over on my course website. Let's go back to my course website. That one has a little bit lower of a window shopper rate. But as I mentioned at the beginning, this particular site is sending a lot of people now over to Podia, which is a course hosting platform. And I'm not hosting all of my courses, just one course that's left on this particular site. So what's great about this plugin is that it runs on my website. So that means I'm not going to get any data being blocked by browser plugins or browsers specifically that are designed to block trackers. This is all information that can be tracked locally. Now, obviously there is data that Google Analytics would be able to collect that Analytics WP wouldn't be able to collect. But if you want the basic analytics for your website that give you the data you need to know whether or not you need to make changes to your site to retain people better so that you can identify those highly active pages so you can make sure that the user journey goes in the direction you want it to. And if you're running an e-commerce store and want better analytics for your WooCommerce store, Analytics WP is a great option. I think it's a fantastic price for the plugin right now, and I don't know how long they're running this. It says Black Friday, and then a price increase is planned after that. But right now you can buy a single site license for $99, and that's a lifetime license. Or for unlimited sites, you can buy it for $199 for unlimited sites. And that's what I did, and I've installed it on, I'd say about 15 sites now. And I'm excited just to have that data locally within each WordPress site so that my clients can see that information so that I can see it without having to go over to Google Analytics. I have SiteKit installed on some of these sites, but SiteKit at times just isn't very helpful. It's not very useful and it becomes disconnected sometimes as well. And so should something like that happen, SiteKit comes disconnected. I've got Analytics WP running and I don't have to worry about it. So just so you can see SiteKit, if you haven't installed SiteKit for Google Analytics on your website, you can see the information that it shows. It does show some search queries. It does show your pages, top content and all of that, which Analytics WP shows as well. But as you can see, like this takes a little bit of time to load sometimes to bring in this information. So while SiteKit is good and I'm not going to uninstall SiteKit, I still want that Google Analytics data because especially on sites where I'm running Google Ads and I want that conversion tracking, that's something that I'm going to need Google Analytics for. But there's nothing wrong with having Analytics WP running on your site. Now, the last thing that I have to say about it was a question that I initially had to answer for myself, which is, will this plugin slow down my site? And I installed it on all of these sites. First of all, I went to the GT Metrics site and did a site speed test on all of these sites. And then I installed Analytics WP and nothing slowed down at all. I didn't see any, not even 1% of a decrease in having this plugin installed. And so it's obviously not doing anything to slow down the website. It's highly optimized and it is not going to slow down your website and cause any issues. And it's also undetectable as well. I went and did many searches with different tools, trying to see if it would find that there is analytics tracking on my website and nothing shows up. It doesn't show up with a ghostry plugin running in the browser. It doesn't show up in Brave browser and it doesn't show up in a handful of other search tools that I used to find out what trackers were running on my sites. So analytics WP first party data, a really nice analytics dashboard for WordPress and data that's easy to understand. And lastly, it's data that you own because it's collected and stored within your WordPress database. So check out the link in the description below to check out Analytics WP. Highly recommend giving it a try. It is a fantastic plugin. And like I said, I've been using it for about a month now with no issues on any of my sites. And I plan to keep using it and also deploy it on the rest of my client sites also. But let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Have you tried first party data plugins before? What are some of the pros and cons that you've ran into? Let's talk about that down in the comments. If you found this video useful, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. We'll see you back in the next one.